Welcome to Nugget 18 with Steve Groman. Today we're going to talk about fossils. And we've been on a few fossil digs in Wyoming. Montana. Where else have we done? I'm having a brain lock. Well, I know we were in Utah. We oh, dug yeah. trilobites in Utah. Actually, we've had trilobites. We've got trilobites in Ohio. Uh, we were over in, I think it was Georgia or South Carolina. We've been in, we've been, we've had uh, opportunities to be in diamond digs and Garnet digs and opal digs and dinosaur digs. And you always like finding gold oh, flakes. and gold. Don't forget the gold, abandoned gold mine. We'll take you all on a tour of gold mine one time, too. Or in silver and even uranium. And we've been <laughs> well, yeah, we've been in copper dolomite mines. Mine, dolomite and copper mines and, yeah. Borax a lot of different fields. Borax. All kinds of crazy A lot places. of stuff. This country has a lot to offer. So, uh, you know, I encourage people, get off the couch and get in the car. Go do something because there's a lot of wonderful stuff out there. Get on that. Get off. And on the beaten path. Yeah. My wife's books are always a good source because there's a lot of information in there about a lot of things that we've done and fun things to do as a family. Tell them where we just recently went in Texas. Well, we were down in uh, Bear County, Colmel County, Gillespie County, Kendall County. Kerr we County? Kerr County and Lukenbach, Texas. Yeah, that's, that's a totally different story. <laughs> I have roots there. <laughs> Bragging rights. <laughs> For anyway. those who know what Lukenbach is. Yep. But anyway, what Where kind of we? fossils did we find? We found brachiopods. We found sponge. We found found some crinoids. Found some gastropods. Found some coral. Found ichnoids. Uh, ichnoids. We found a lot of different things. Nut clams. Bivalves. All marine life. All and it's all water life. Where we yes. got these fossils all around a thousand foot elevation. Elev- yes. All yes. in central Texas. Well, on in way away from the <laughs> way away from the the ocean. Right, and the evolutionists know that it takes water. And burial. Yes, and they even say it in their in the books. You know, the interesting thing that I always say is they just don't have a mechanism. They know it takes water. They know it takes rapid burial. They know it takes a fast process, but they don't have a mechanism right, for it. Right, because the decay process would set in. Yeah, the decay. Anybody ever went to a beach, you know you're lucky to find two halves of a seashell that match each other. But yet, clothes clams are found everywhere all over this earth. We have a, a fossil handbook that we like to use just to help us identify fossils. Of course, it's from an evolutionary viewpoint, but it has a lot of interesting information on where to find fossils. And one of the things I mentioned is that after your field trip, the job's not over. No, there's a lot of cleaning and sorting. and Yeah, tell them how we clean the fossils. Well, usually we rinse them off first, just water outside, just blast them with water and get all the loose dirt, debris, sand. We'll brush them a little bit, but then we'll soak them in vinegar. It doesn't take long, just a short amount of time, and you can kind of tell when they're, they're done. Just to bust loose anything else that's... Uh, not really part of it. It's just kind of hanging on, clinging on. And then we'll use a, a toothbrush. And when they're ours for display or for sale, I'll take a pick and, and clean them. I mean, actually pull all the, the loose material out of there. I tell people all the time, when you find a seashell, and, or they'll get them from us, I tell people all the time that, because uh, we have some fossils that we have the the kids dig through a little sand bucket. Sometimes we have uh, some for sale and they'll get them. And sometimes there's still a little bit of the matrix still on them. The, right. The if rock a fossil is not still in the rock, it's the, the matrix. Right. It's not part of the fossil, of the rock of the fossil. It's a part of the rock that the fossil is found in. And that stuff will pick off with a pick and the chisel. Just be real careful with it. But it is a separate item, so it will chip away. You know, we clean them up a little bit that way. And amazing, how amazing how well Yeah, as you out. can see in these pictures, some of these things were pretty dirty, had mildew, fungus, who knows what growing on them, right. but the vinegar and the water and a toothbrush and a little bit of time in the sun and they're beautiful. Yeah, they, they clean right out. It's fun to dig, you know, and if there's somebody at the meeting that shows an interest in a fossil and somebody else in the family can't understand it, you know, because it looks like a rock to me, you know, I hear that all the well, time. Well, it is. The, the organics become inorganic, right, correct? Right, right. It's a process. It's been, but yeah, it's been replaced with the, uh, with the rock material, whatever that may be. In this case, it's limestone for the most part, but the ones we just did. But I'll tell them, you know, of all the, the billions of people that will have ever lived on Earth, yours are the first two eyes to ever see this particular one that you just got out of the ground. It kind of makes it special, even no matter how, if it's complete, if it's a nice one, or if it's just an okay, you're the first one to ever see it, which means it's pretty special to you. It was kind of fun uh, when we started out last week. We uh, were at a place in Kendall County. Some surveyors came up on us, kind of wondering what we're doing, but they don't really care. And we said that we're like looking for fossils. And one of the guys, he didn't even know that these rocks he's been walking all over, yeah, a lot we, of them are we, fossils. And so he was really pretty time. intrigued. He, he'd seen some pretty rocks and quartz and all, but he'd not ever really noticed the fossils. Right. So a lot of times when people look at this, they just think they're looking at rocks. Speaking of that, we want to make sure that you know to always be in a public right of way or ask for permission from any private right. landowner. And if you are doing this on the side of the road, which are some of the best places where they've cut through 
uh, a hillside, for example, to cut the road through. Those are great places to be, but you must be safe. So I don't even stay on the shoulder of the road. I park way off into the into the grass, usually into the weeds. Get as far away as you can because it's it can be dangerous. Seventy mile an hour vehicles it goes by in a real fast hurry if you've never stood beside one. Right, safety first. Absolutely. All right, it's a lot of fun. But have fun, have right. fun, and don't forget to just watch for. Depends on where you are. Watch for snakes and scorpions and sticker burrs and everything else. Broken bottles that can cut your feet. You know, right. I mean, wear some good shoes. Don't go out there in flip-flops or sandals. You know, be sure you wear some good sturdy shoes and be careful. Safety first. Safety first. Keep watching our nuggets. And while you're at it, tell 10,000 of your closest friends about our YouTube channel. Like, subscribe, hit that little bell, and tell others about our YouTube channel. Thank you.